Hey, what's up everyone? We're going to do a facility tour today over at Pedal and Scales. So uh, cue the intro, dive on in. All right, everyone. Hey, we're at Pedals and Scales today. Shirt shout out to MJ, the Zoo Dreams edition. Thanks, MJ. Hey guys, I'm Mike, uh, Pedals and Scales. Uh, me and my wife, Jennifer, have our own hobby. Uh, you know, we'll try to make it a business, but right now it's just a great hobby that we're doing. Um, as you can see, we're in my garage facility. It's the man cave, really. <laughs> Come on in. And something really cool about Mike is he's done everything himself, built everything from the ground up at an affordable budget. So he's going to highlight all those aspects and uh, back over to him. Here we go. Okay, so this is pretty much my snake room. Um, all these racks I've built myself. Uh, got good deals on these plastic shelvings at Home Depot. And whenever I see a deal I can't pass up, I just buy it and eventually I'll use it. Uh, these racks were like $8 at Home Depot. And as you can see, I cut my own, made my own racks for babies. This is my babies, mediums, and then my adults. And as you can see, the, my babies kind of filled up my medium rack. So these guys are going to be going on this rack. I just built this rack recently. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't cost much. I mean, it takes a little bit of knowledge. I mean, you can kind of cut them down however you want. Um, I've seen people use them with... Uh, like a shelf underneath it so you don't use the lids um, but personally what i like to do because it's a hobby still for me and i just i love my snakes so, you know they're like family to us i love taking the whole tub out and i love opening the snake you know holding the snake my kids hold the snake my wife holds the snakes um you know i'll clean them out and then you know put them back in um same thing you know i built my incubator this year i got a really good deal on this red bull incubator um the whole thing probably cost me, uh, let's see, it was like 60, maybe a hundred bucks. So I got a, I got a ridiculously good deal on the actual fridge and then I had heat tape left over and some, so everything I, everything I build, I save and I reuse. If I'm going to change the way a shelf is, I'll, I'll save the uh, heat tape. I'll save the wiring, the connections. I'll just reuse basically everything. It's, you know, I'm just do it myself or kind of guy. Uh, something I recently built was my hashing rack. Um, this will hold 48 babies, and this wood was just leftover wood, wood from work, wood I had around the house, and it'll hold 48 babies. Um, so the wood was free. I got to buy the heat tape still and the, the thermostat, but that's probably going to cost me 100 bucks to hold 48 snakes. Man, that's a really good deal. Yeah, yeah. Saves a lot of money. Yes, it does. And then also with uh, breeding snakes and keeping snakes. You know, I found the cost effective way is to breed my own mice and rats. So I built this, this is my mouse rack right here. I built that, you know, leftover wood. These are just tubs I get from Home Depot and I'm not worried about if they chew through or not because they're so cheap, I can just replace it. You can see right there. <laughs> oh yeah. He likes to get out. <laughs> um, and then my rats too, same thing right here. Built this one for my rats. Eventually, I'm probably gonna get that watering system because it's easier. But same thing with my rats. I just get these big water jugs. I uh, I handle my rats a lot, so I raise them. Most of my breeders now are babies that I've raised to be uh, my breeders. Uh, so yeah, I got eight tubs right here going, enough to feed mine and friends. And so same thing with this. This is a, a dust collector, cheap and easy box fan. And I just got an AC filter through behind that. It collects the dust really well. That's smart. Yeah. It's like MacGyver. MacGyver pretty much everything. <laughs> For all you youngsters out there, MacGyver was a genius back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube MacGyver, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the watering system, is that one of those ones like with a five gallon bucket or something? I've kind of seen those on videos. Yeah, yeah. It's a, we'll put a five gallon bucket. I'll build a shelf up there. And it's kind of like gravity fed. So I'll have little hoses and little attachments that go in each little container here. And I'll just dump water in the five gallon bucket and not have to worry about it instead of having to refill, you know, all these. And then like the ends have like a ball type valve yeah, similar to those? Yeah, similar to this, yeah. yeah. And I'll just get the water from that. It's just easier just to dump a bucket in there for that too. Yeah, save a little bit of time instead of filling everyone individually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah so I, and I, I take care of you and I know. These are, you know, and we know they're feeders and all, but I, I take care of them. They're, you know, they're part of us and I, you know, 
better quality that you put into your your animals and your feed, the better your snakes are going to look and this and that, you know. So these guys only get like purified water, <laughs> the best food. Like I bought a watering filtering system, not just for the rats and stuff and the snakes, but for the whole family, you know. So I, I take care of everything. Man, they're, they're getting better water than I get. <laughs> filtered water. Three times filtered water. Um. You want to show them kind of like the heat tape part of your racks, like how yeah. just for the, so, uh, the, the do-it-yourselfers out there so they get an idea? Yeah, so actually I have a slipper right here. So this is what the heat tape looks like. You see that? Yeah. So, you know, all you do is you separate the plastic ends, put a little metal, metal connector in there, and then uh, what you got to do though is you got to get a thermostat controller because if you just plug this into the wall, it'll just heat up until this thing fries open. Yeah. So what you need to do is... You run your the positive side, your negative side, hook it up to a thermostat, and it'll heat up with the with the uh, thermostat control right here. It'll heat up to the amount that you need it to, so it won't cook your snakes. It'll keep it at just the right temperature. And something I want to point out is notice how the heat tapes towards the back right here. So that way, it gives them a heat gradient. Yep, yep. So as you see, some of my tubs, most of them actually, are hanging over the edge. So right here is going to be the coolest side. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they got the warm side in the back and a lot of my snakes, I mean, they do just that. They like to go from hot to cold, hot to cold. And, uh, yeah. And then these guys, my mediums, my babies, they're going to be going in this big one this weekend. So you've got some room for babies now. Yeah, I like how you have like a taller tub. You give them more room to kind of move around and yeah. stuff than, than most like conventional racks and stuff. So. Yes, definitely. My, the thing with my wife is, um, uh, she, my wife personally doesn't like like, like really tight small spaces even though some of them are really long she doesn't like she likes she feels the snakes even more room so that's why i build these and eventually like if this is even too small for a snake like i have my adult snakes here these these tubs don't even fit you know long ways in there so i put them sideways on there but these are my uh yeah these are my adults my really big ones are like three thousand grams yeah big <laughs> big breeders um Something I noticed that's an advantage to doing it yourself is you can pretty much pick any size tub that the, that they make out there, right? Yeah. And build yeah. it around your tub size however you want to keep it. Yeah, it's very easy custom. I mean, if you have just simple basic tools, you can make something like this. Yeah, like those ones up top are like almost like aquarium size. Like what are those? Like 20, 40 gallon yeah. size? Yeah. Right in the middle of that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's pretty interesting. Yeah. So how much... Uh, how much would a ballpark figure would a, like a rack like that cost somebody if they wanted to do it themselves? Um, like I said, I got a really good deal on these shelves. So like this shelf, this is a four shelf. I got that at Home Depot really good. Like the deal was like eight dollars for a shelf. I couldn't pass it up, so I bought a bunch of them. Um, but the shelf like this and the heat tape. Uh, nowadays, like these shelves are like what twenty five bucks. The heat tape um, will run you maybe like. 15 bucks plus the thermostat controller. So maybe, I mean, 60, 70 bucks, and you can you can house two, four, six, eight, you know, however, this is right here, two, four, six, yeah, eight snakes. Yeah. That, I mean, if you had a baby in this, they can grow up in that and just stay in that. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, see, that's a thermostat. Mike's running over there. I've, I've tried different thermostats. I've tried from cheap to very expensive, and to me, cheap works and I, I i mean i always keep even if even if it's a cheap thermostat i'm checking my snakes constantly making sure what's on the thermostat is what's in the tub um i've even tried these ones like these like you can't really see them back there but like those like the ones you get from like china japan you gotta program them yourself and wire everything yourself and to me that was just interesting just to try to do so i was like oh i'll give it a shot and it worked great i mean they only heat one to one so I'm not running a full rack on those ones, but it, it works great. If you got small space, it's doable. Very yeah. doable. Yeah, totally cool. Totally cool. Want to tell us a little bit more about... So yeah, so the, I got really lucky on this incubator again. Um, what's really cool about these fridges is they have uh, an air duct system where the fan is sucking up air and it's, it's cycling the air through it. So even though I only have like, you know, a certain amount of uh, heat tape, as long as I have the consistent fan, the fan's running, I have a, I hooked up the light in the fan, so you got my light switches. I did all that wiring myself. Yeah. Um, 
So right now that fan is spinning up there. I got thermostat right here on each shelf. I have a thermostat so I can make sure that everything's working correctly. And uh, pretty much, I mean, it's kind of simple. I just, the guts were out of it already. So I just ran my wiring through the guts of the fridge and got the fan to work, rewired the fan. So it's, it's you gotta know a little, little bit of electricity, a little bit, you know, construction stuff, but I mean, with all the YouTube guys out there, I mean, I wouldn't know what I was doing without those guys putting those videos out. And I, I like, they, they, they even go over, like, they, they'll recap and say, oh, this is the mistake I made, and, you know, you should do this instead, and I, I follow their mistakes and what they've done, and I've made mistakes, and, but, you know, you learn, you live and learn. Yeah, that's how you learn, definitely. I, I watch a ton of YouTube, and, yeah, I learn a lot of stuff about husbandry, everything, pairing. Mm -hmm. What kind of uh, thermostat do you use on that? Same? Same, yeah. Same as my heat racks. It's, uh, here. This is, it's like a power, you know, just generic. Yeah. No name brand kind of thing. And it works great. I have no issues with these at all. And these are like 17 bucks on Amazon. Yeah, see, so that just goes to show you don't have to get herb stats and all that stuff. You can run it on, on lower dollar stuff. Mike does just great with his collection. Yeah. Eventually, I mean, I think I'll get to that point where I'll need, <laughs> you know, some more professional stuff because right now feeding right now probably takes me about an hour and a half with the snakes because I do feed live, but I feed live, um, you know, I, I watch them. I, I make sure because sometimes these, these rats will, you know, bite the snakes and, you know, these, some of these snakes, I have like a pretty high dollar amount of snakes and I don't want them getting hurt either. Um, so I kind of watch and make sure everything's okay. Yeah, we, we had a snake get injured, got bit in the mouth by a rat and it got an abscess. And that was a few hundred bucks at the vet visit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's another thing too is um, we're, I'm a, we're from Bakersfield, so there, there's not too many veterinarians out here that work with reptiles. So a lot of times when things happen with my snakes, I watch videos on it. I've had a snake have a, uh, a mouth infection and just by watching videos on how to take care of it and, and clean it up like that, she healed. Great, and that, and that was just like simple household stuff you could buy at the store. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a lot of do-it-yourself stuff you can do, even when it comes to the medicine part of uh, snake keeping too. So, yeah. got any uh, special snakes you want to show off? Uh, I do. I have I have a couple favorites. I mean, I love all my snakes, but I really like uh, these ones. And, and breeding for me wasn't a plan. I uh, I had got. A bumblebee for my birthday. My wife let me have another snake, so <laughs> I got a bumblebee for my birthday. And and doing some more research uh, on these ball pythons, I found something like this. This is a pewter pike. I like that. Yeah. So in doing research, I've I've never seen a snake like this before. So I um, I did some research and I find out. There's, there's a gene called the pie gene and I'm you know doing more, more research this like I said this wasn't the plan to breed or <laughs> have this many snakes um, but I was like well you know some of these like this you know the pewter pies are like five six hundred bucks and up and I was like there's no way I could afford a snake like this so I'm like okay well you know what what are some options if I can get a snake like this maybe not like this but something similar and I found a breeding pair of pet pies um, three hundred dollars for the pair and I was like, wow, I can make more pies than I ever could want. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. And that, mind you, this, I've never bred ever in my life. I just was, I did more research than I could ever do. And that's how I live my life. Research first, cut later. <laughs> um, so yeah, I got a breeding pair and I paired them up, you know, my first season and it happened. I got some eggs and I got pies and I was like, wow, this is amazing. So the next season, paired up some more and I've got some more snakes and it's just kind of where I'm at now. It's pretty much most of what I have is, is stuff that I've bred. Um, a lot of stuff too because I'm, I'm not really like in it for like the business part of it so I've done a lot of like if you want to say like dealer trades or like hobbyist trades. Yeah. Um, yeah. So a lot of the other ones I've had are, have been like trades you know like you know I have too many of this snake and you know someone else has this snake and we make a trade and it's all fun and fair and y'all it's, it's like the hobbies part of it all oh yeah for sure yeah for sure so that's that's the pewter pie is definitely one of my favorites um let's see what we got oh we got 
beautiful Mojave down there. She's super adventurous. Yeah, see, and the way these tubs are, I mean, like I kind of said earlier, they're kind of like the aquariums too, so you can still see your snakes, and I mean, this is a pretty cool setup. Or, you've got the dark version over there, so the sky's the limit with uh, building your own stuff, I would say. Yeah. Totally customize it however you see fit. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. When I got extra space, so I have extra space, it becomes storage for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Until I need to make that rack into a, you know, rack for the snakes. But these, these, these are my females that are breeding. This is my, uh, and this is probably the uh, shed before she's going. This, that's my het pied normal female. She has produced some just amazing pieds. Let me show you. So she's a normal, and this is uh, this is what she gave me last year. This guy's definitely one of my favorites. She's got a little bit of paradox in them too. Oh yeah, that's really Peaches. bright. Oh yeah, look at that white. You got a little heart right there, a little pixelated heart. Oh, yeah. That's really nice. That's cool. Yeah. The so color on that's bright too. Just oh, for... yeah. He's got that, like that paradox. And he's got really dark, like normal up here, but then he got that pastel, like the yellows in it. Yeah. But just the patterns is real trip too. Very clean snake. Mm hmm. Yeah, he's definitely like. Yeah, when I was shooting for those pies and I got this guy, I was like, wow, I just, I hit the lotto already. I'm just, I'm just going to give up now. <laughs> or I'm not going to win the lotto because I got this guy. <laughs> uh, let's see, I can show you some of my... So breeding this year, I got, uh, well, my cinnamon pet pie. She's, the, she's my uh, pewter pie produced mama right here. She is like just a sweetheart. But she's really heavy too. <laughs> She is, she's really adventurous. You can see she's big. Oh yeah. All snakes like the camera. I think they see the heat. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how so, many, uh, uh, approximately how many clutches do you expect this year? Uh, right now, all five. I'm reading five. And the thing too with like it, it being a hobby and I'm not pushing for it. I, mean, I would love for this to be a business because like if this was my job every day, I'm, I'm in heaven already. I, I love what I do coming out here and taking care of my snakes. So I got five females breeding right now and we kind of, between me and my wife, we kind of want to keep it like at that rate, like, you know, like kind of like a, a snake boutique kind of thing, you know, like we don't want to like mass produce. Um, but like I said, like pretty much all the snakes that we produce, we've kept because it's just like they become part of the family. Yeah. So, and, you know, and I got five bred snakes breeding right now. I had two last season and 18 eggs just from two snakes. Oh wow. So it, yeah. It, yeah, that's pretty good. It adds up pretty quick, yeah. And then let's see, I got this girl, she's like, oh, she's like, keep me cold, keep me cool. She's in the, she's in the water. Oh, yeah. This is my king. You can see like, she just, her belly is just so big. And she is such a sweetheart too. She's beautiful. Yeah. She's not hypo at all? No, king thing. I, I don't. Man, that yeah, is a kingpin, but she I think she's stretched out so much because she's so big that yeah. <laughs> it's just bringing out the white between the scales. Yeah, so she's, I got, you know, I pretty much what I've been breeding this year is uh, definitely snakes that I don't have personally and snakes that I've never seen personally. So I, to me, it's like, even if I just get something that, you know, that's, that's in the market and just flooded in the market, but I've never seen them personally. Like I've never seen a banana cinnamon before. And I was like, you know, when I seen that, I was like, oh, I want one of those. So I, I have a banana, I bread it with my cinnamon and you know, I'll get a hope they'll get a banana cinnamon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and then, you know, there's this, this one right here, I, I got her from a friend and I don't know exactly what she is. So the only way to tell that is when she breeds, I'll find out, but for some, I think she's a mystic patternless potion or mystic potion. He wasn't sure what it was either, so he said maybe Mojave in there or something. So we'll see, when she has some babies, we'll be able to tell what she is. If you guys have any ideas or can ID that, leave it in the comments. I, I would appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she's a sweetheart too. When she was younger, she was like silver. Real right. silver, and as she's getting older, that, that yellow white is just coming down the stripe, and so I, I really don't know which. Yeah. So, but we'll we'll find out. 
one of the cool things about this hobby, right? Yeah. Mystery surprises. Definitely. Like you can, it's like detective work. You can actually trace, you know, your, the genealogy just back to, you know, what the babies look like. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I got a clown. I'm not really, I'm not really planning with the clown. I just, not really, I'm planning with green, but I never had a clown. I've never seen a clown. And a clown popped up and I was like, oh, I gotta have it. Oh yeah. He just Clowns like, are great. Yeah, he looks like just a classic clown, but he's just amazing, beautiful. He's a little picky eater though. He likes mice. Oh yeah. But as big as he is, I'm like, how is he? How is he that big? And he's all on mice. There's a reason why clowns are like the king of all morphs, man. I mean, they're pretty phenomenal. Just even just a single gene or anything. I mean, yeah. They go good with a lot of different genes. So. Yes. 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 All right, so uh, Mike, do you have any advice for other future breeders out there that are just getting started? Yes, definitely. Um, research, number one. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, most breeders are friends. They know each other. They're, they're Most of the part, they're good people. You ask them a question on YouTube or a comment or Instagram, they're going to reply and give you some tips. Um, a lot of times it's you know issues with problem feeders and stuff like that. We've all gone through that. And we, you know, we got tips and tricks from, you know, top to bottom, A to Z. We can, we can help you through it. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions, just, you know, ask Shane, and he'll, if he doesn't know, Shane will ask me, and if I don't know, then we'll ask somebody else. <laughs> I got something better though. If you have any questions on building anything, hit him up on his Instagram because I'm gonna leave all his info on the description down below. So go ahead and just flood his inbox. I'll leave his personal phone number down there too. Yeah. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, definitely, yeah, if you guys want any, like, uh, tips on building something like this, you know, message Shane on this video and or my Instagram, and uh, I'll help you through it. Well, I mean, this, this is all a hobby to me, and I love helping people. So what do you think about starting your own YouTube channel? Uh, maybe. Maybe. It depends. If I like this, if it comes out good, maybe. Depends uh, what you guys think. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I wanted to give you a shirt. Oh, it's a new uh, small town exotic shirt. Yeah, it's official. Yeah, yeah. Guys. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, cool. Thanks, Shane. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, like I said, man, I'm going to leave all his info in the description down below. If you got any questions on any of the do it yourself stuff, Mike's definitely the guy to ask, man. I'm really impressed with his setup and how he's done everything all from the ground up by himself. So, it's very impressive. And uh, until next time, guys, rock on. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>